Hello, and welcome back to my channel, PJG here from Tech and It Real. Today we have the pleasure of unboxing the AC2300 Smart Wi-Fi Router. Now the model number is the R7000P, not to be confused with its older brother, which is the R7000. That's the first generation of Nighthawk router. Um, it's in the AC, it's uh, the AC1900 Smart Wi-Fi router. Now they look nearly identical. They've got the USB port on the front. They've got the LEDs on the front. It's got the same shape and they both have tri-dipole antennas. The biggest difference is the one gigahertz dual core processor that's been used in the AC2300 smart Wi-Fi router. Okay, so what does this dual core processor translate to? Whereas before you had lots of speed and you had AC1900, what you didn't have was the ability to host multiple streams, lots of streams of ultra high definition video, online gaming, downloading, and you couldn't do it for an extended period of time. It was, it was much more bursty. Once you get about five streams going, then you start to notice a slowdown. You have to reboot the router. With this one, this dual core processor, the first thing it does is it allows you to have multiple streams, more streams, streaming more stuff for longer periods of time without slowdown. That's the real world explanation of what this dual core processor does. This particular router, it retails for about 189 to up to 200 bucks uh, between the brick and mortars and your online retailers. The thing about it is it's well worth it. If you've got a large house and you do a lot of online streaming, a lot of downloading, or you just have a lot of connections, this is the router for you. You want to ignore the price. The price tag is, you know, consider it an investment. So let me pop this box open. Again, this is the R7000P AC2300 Smart Wi-Fi Router. Like I said, it looks it looks similar to its predecessor, which is the AC1900. And again, it's got all of the same uh, features and functionality of the AC1900, except this one's got the dual core processor and it's got the powered antennas, the amplified antennas. It's also got the beam forming. The R7000, the first generation, doesn't have it. This is an excellent upgrade from the R7000. So we've cracked the box open. First thing we've got out is the router. Um, it's nice and it's nice and aerodynamic. Uh, it's got the the um, venting on the sides. So it's got the venting on the back, venting underneath on the sides. The thing I like about this one is it's wall mountable. So the first generation, I, ha I actually have the first generation in my home as, as one of my routers. First generation didn't have this here. It wasn't wall mountable. And, you know, if you're like me, you, you want to maximize your space. I'd like to mount this on the wall in a centrally located area of my home. And that's possible with this one here. So the layout of the front here, we've got the... Power LED, this just lets you know what power is on. You've got the internet um, status LED. Then you've got the wireless 2.4 gigahertz LED. You've got the 5 gigahertz. You've got your USB ports, right? This tells you the status. These four LEDs here are for your um, wired connections. So if you've got devices that don't support wireless but have a, a wired connection, you plug them in here for those ports. You've got your Wi-Fi enable, disable button here. So it's an LED, it's also a button. You can disable it or enable it here. You've also got the WPS uh, connection button here. So if you wanna connect using WPS, then you know you push that button and go through that process. All of these LEDs light up amber or white based on their connection status. We'll go through that in a different video. Further, on the front, you've got your USB 3.0 port. On the back, these are your uh, standard dipole antenna connections, and they're just covered with these little protective coverings here. You've got your power connector, your power, your on-off switch, USB 2.0. This is your internet connection. This is your connection you're going to run to your um, DSL or cable modem, 
and these are the, the RJ45 switch port connections. This is your reset button. So if you want to reset the router or do a hard reset, this is where you do it. So this is the quick start manual. You don't need that because you've got me. This is more quick start guide info. This is uh, your part of your um, family settings you can set up, right? So you can make it conducive for kids or mom and dad or, you know, whatever. Don't need that really because you've got me. This is the power supply. Standard stuff here. These are your dipole antennas. Um, they're a little bigger than than the predecessor, the, the previous model. These are nice. And again, they're powered, so I'm really interested interested to see what kind of range I get on these. More standard stuff here. You've got your uh, RJ45 connection. This is how you're going to get your your internet from your DSL router or cable modem to your smart Wi-Fi router. So that's all that's in the box. Let's get it powered up and connected to the internet. Okay, so this device is powering up. This uh, AC2300 smart Wi-Fi router is powering up. It takes about two minutes uh, to two and a half minutes to get to a point where you're able to log in and do the configuration. Um, in, the smart, in the startup guide, it tells you to connect with a wired connection, but the reality is that you don't, you're not always going to have access to that. If you have access to a wired connection, then you plug one end of the RJ45 network cable into your wired device and the other end into one of the wired ports on the back of this router. The device I'm using to configure it, it does not have um, a wired connection. It's only wireless. And if you can follow along, you'll be able to do, to do the setup without any issues. So I'll see you back here in two and a half minutes. On, these net, on this particular Netgear model, we're going to connect to uh, Netgear 37. I'm just going to connect to the 5G connection. And the password is right there on top of the router. So basic, if I can spell that would be good. When we connect to that network and we open a browser window, it automatically goes to routerlogin.net. And Netgear routers are particularly good about this. Most of them have one of these types of URLs that you navigate to. However, the only one that's worked every single time has been the Netgear. So, so the first thing we want to, the first thing we want to do is select, let me choose, and then we want to select router mode. Okay. Then we're going to select next. And it's going to ask if you can disable your gateways Wi-Fi. Most often when you go to your, when you uh, order cable or DSL internet, they give you a big box that does both wired and Wi-Fi connectivity, as well as provides your gateway connectivity to the internet. And what this question is asking you is, can you disable the Wi-Fi connectivity on your, um, the, on your ISP provided device? Almost always I'm gonna select yes here. I'm gonna select yes here because even if you don't know the way to do it, what you'll do is you'll call your ISP, tell them what you're trying to do, and they'll walk you through disabling the Wi-Fi on your uh, ISP provided device so that you can use the Wi-Fi on your Netgear device. 100 times out of 100 times, your Netgear device is gonna be, it's gonna provide more power. It's gonna be a better experience, a better Wi-Fi router than what the ISP provides. So we'll go ahead and select yes. And it shows you here the, um, the process that we're gonna go through. So if you know how to disable the Wi-Fi, you'll log into your 
ISP provider device and disable the, connect, the Wi-Fi connectivity. Before you do that, whether you call the ISP first or whether you do it yourself, what you want to do is copy down the wireless keys, the wireless network keys um, for your existing connectivity. What we want to do is make this a seamless transition from your ISP provided wire, wireless connectivity to wireless connectivity on your Netgear or router. What that means, we're going to copy the existing wireless info and we're going to, we're going to actually name your SSID or your wireless network names for both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz if you have both. We're going to rename those to whatever you are using for your ISP's Wi-Fi connectivity. Okay, so you can pause here if you need to go and and get your wireless connectivity on the, on the ISP device disabled and copy over all of that existing information so that you can input it here. If you have an, an ISP provided cable or DSL modem and it only has wired connectivity, it doesn't have Wi-Fi access, then you can just make these SSIDs whatever you like and the network keys whatever you like. So I don't have Wi-Fi in my ISP provided um, DSL cable modem. So I'm just going to create a network ID. And I'm going to put an underscore two four here because this is uh, 2.4 gigahertz. And then the network key. So I put ABC123 here. But you want to make this as secure as possible. So you want to have some uppercase letters, some lowercase letters, at least one number, and at least one special character, like an exclamation point. You want to store your Wi-Fi key somewhere safe. You want to make sure that you keep this information secure. Okay, so this one's going to be the same, except I'm going to add 5G here for 5 gigahertz. Same password. And then I'm going to hit next. Okay, so that just let me know I have to do at least eight characters. So let's see. A, B, C, D, E, F, one, two, three. Let's save it like that. Yep, it took that one. The next page is just a confirmation page and just lets you know what, what options you selected. Again, write these this information down so that um, you remember it in case you have it in case you forget it and store it in a safe place. So I'm going to click finish. Once I click finish, the router is going to go through a reboot sequence. And it'll take up to 60 seconds to a minute and a half for that. So then goes back to router login. So the default password is admin and password. And I should caution you here. If you, if you're setting up this router and for whatever reason, router login doesn't work, the default password, the default IP address or URL that you're going to, that you're going to navigate to is either 192 dot one six eight dot one dot one or zero dot one for these netgear routers typically it's typically one dot one but there it is right there it took a minute to get there so you can get there either way you can get there using the URL or you can get there using uh, the IP address, which is 192.168.1.1 by default. So we're already in, we'll close that window. So you're gonna come back to this page, but don't be alarmed, go on and click on let me choose and uh, router mode, click next. 
And then this time select no, where it says, can you disable your existing gateways Wi-Fi? Right, just select no. This information is, is just gonna reconfirm what we already know here. Select next, and then it proceeds to the next step. So it's checking for an internet connection. I've already plugged it into my DSL router. So this will take a moment. So the next thing we need to do after we check the internet connection and it comes to this screen, um, we want to reset the password. So we're going to make this something that you'll easily remember. And again, you, you want to record it and put it somewhere safe. All right. It also asks you some security questions. Now, the neat thing about this is um, it's asking, asking you these security questions just in case you lock yourself out of the router. And what it'll do if you lock yourself out of the router is it'll ask you these, it'll prompt you to answer these security questions. When you answer them correctly, it'll help you reset the password for admin. Then it's going to prompt me to enter that password that I chose for admin. And then I'm not going to enable this here. I'm going to go in and skip it. And then it'll bring me to the Netgear router's default dashboard page where all of the, the basic settings are. These widgets show the various statuses for the different parts of the device or different components of the router. Internet we see here is good. We haven't tested it yet. Wireless is good because it's green here. It's, it's telling us here the number of devices we have attached and whether QoS is on. Then it's got guest network not enabled, ready share not enabled, and then parental controls not enabled. So, All right, so we're going to do an internet test. Let's go on and try CNN.com. And it looks like it's going to pop up. There it is. So we've got internet access. So that, that wraps up this video. We've got the internet up and running on our new Netgear uh, Nighthawk AC2300 smart Wi-Fi router. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time for more exciting tech stuff.